so hello everyone today we're going to look at the rate of diffusion of gases so we know what diffusion is right diffusion is where particles move from where there are plenty particles to where there are few particles until they're evenly distributed area of high concentration to low and so on right now the whole point to the phenomena of diffusion well explaining it at least is that it provides proof and evidence for the particular theory of matter where we say that matter is made up of particles and those particles are in constant random motion due to the kinetic energy they contain right there are forces of attraction between these particles and spaces between these particles so all of that is part of the um, particular theory of matter but what are these particles well particles isn't just a random thing right? particles are basically atoms molecules or ions and if we know anything about atoms is that you have different sizes of atoms so if you have different sizes of atoms we could see if we were to look at them moving right because you're looking at particles in motion right that different particles will move faster than others because they have different sizes right so today we're going to investigate the rate of diffusion of gases using two gases hydrogen chloride gas and ammonia gas now in these this container here i have concentrated hydrochloric acid and in this container container sorry i have concentrated ammonia so these gases i'm um, sorry these substances will as soon as you uncork the bottle because of the high concentration they immediately turn into a vapor right so that's the hope in this case so when concentrated hydrochloric acid becomes a vapor we call it hydrogen chloride gas right so what i have prepared here is two beakers this beaker containing the concentrated ammonia dropper containing it and this beaker contains the concentrated hcl a dropper of that hcl right and what we are going to do we are going to at the same time take each of these droppers and place a few drops of each substance into our setup here but at the same time because it's a race we need the race to be fair right now hcl gas is characterized as being dense white fumes right so what we should see on the left here is dense white fumes gathering up here ammonia on the other hand is a clear colorless gas so we should see uh, we shouldn't be seeing anything there so how will we know which gas travels faster than the other so the two gases basically going to be racing each other from either end of this tube so from this end to this end right so if the two of them travel at the same rate or all gases travel at the same rate they should meet in the middle right now if it's heavier gases travel slower than lighter gases then one gas will be closer to their end than the other because it travels slower than the other the other one is going to reach it before so how will we tell when that happens well when hcl combines with ammonia a white solid is formed ammonium chloride so we should see that as a ring forming now the ring will form closer to the side with the heavier gas right so that's what we're going to look out for now ideally i should have stoppers to stop at the ends of my glass tube here but i don't so i'm hoping that these pieces of tape will help with that all right so let's get started let's try to race these two gases together all right and see what happens This is my makeshift stopper and he hopes that my gas does not escape. So we're already seeing the HCl becoming dense white vapor. So you can see some cloudiness here. And on the other side, it's clear. So it's the hope that we will actually see when the two of them meet and form that ammonium chloride 
quite solid so that we could tell who was faster than who. Now, of course, this experiment is being conducted in a fume cupboard as inhalation of both those gases are a bit harmful. So we don't want to be inhaling that at this point or at any point, as a matter of fact. can actually measure the distance which these two gases travel using here and here as the starting point of each and this length as a length along which they travel so we could actually measure the distance moved by each gas before they meet Concentration isn't high enough, I may not be able to see it, but I saw more or less the concentration of white was here initially and the rest was clear. And now it's starting to get cloudy, so which means that there wasn't enough to form that clearly defined white ring that we are looking for. And of course, based on the definition that I just said for diffusion or the explanation for diffusion. Both particles are going to distribute themselves within the glass tube until both of them are evenly distributed. So eventually the whole tube will develop a cloudy appearance. It's kind of hard to see with this setup, but I'm seeing that up until here it has a lot of cloudiness, while the rest of here was clear. Now it's starting to see cloudiness spreading throughout here. So I don't think I'll get my clearly defined ring. So I'll use this marker here as the point where they would have met, right? So. I'll have to use that because I'm not getting the white ring that I was expecting. I think maybe my HCL and my ammonia probably need to be more concentrated. <laughs> So still no ring, so I'm going to measure my distance. So, I would say that the cloudiness had reached till here, around 8 centimeters away from the starting point. Right? So, which means, and the distance between here and here is 22 centimeters. So if 8, 8 or 9, so 22 centimeters is the distance between the two, right? And the white cloudy gas is occupying the first 8 cm there. So that should be 14 centimeters the ammonia traveled. Whereas the HCL only traveled 8, right? 
So I just measure in where that white dense white fumes would have been concentrated. Alright. So the distance between the two is 22 centimeters. And the HCl would have traveled 8 centimeters. Whereas the ammonia would have traveled a distance of 14 centimeters before they met. Fortunately, I'm not seeing my white ring, but you could see where the dense cloudiness is here. Right? So eventually this whole tube should end up becoming cloudy. Right? So roughly 8 centimeters. Right, so we'll go with that. So at around 8 centimeters, the HCL travel a distance of 8 centimeters. Whereas the ammonia traveled a distance of 14 centimeters before they met, right? And where they met, you see in a cloudiness sort of occurring here. So that could be where ammonium chloride is being formed. Sadly, they weren't concentrated enough to form that dense white ring that is normally associated with this experiment. So that's it for today and we will continue this, well, continue with more experiments uh, next time. And since we were unable to get the white ring for the experiment that shows where the two gases meet, which should be, um, it should clearly show that one gas is faster than the other because one would have traveled a greater distance. Um, there's a here's a supplementary video that can be viewed on YouTube to show clearly where the dense white fumes of HCl is and possibly the formation of that white ring. Right. So this is to add on to this experiment. All right. So that's it, everyone. Hope this was helpful and enjoy the rest of your day.